So here you can see the Waste Isolation Pilot Plant, or WIP, facility. Uh, we're currently on the way to the Gnome site, uh, but we're passing by this, and so this is a perfect opportunity to talk about it. This facility is really unique. It's the only one in the U.S. that can actually handle transuranic waste. So any of the plutonium and uranium um, processing uh, equipment, um, waste, anything that they has been contaminated with those transuranics, is actually stored here. And uh, here you can see the sign, Waste Isolation Pilot Plant, which is about 2,150 feet below the surface. Uh, you can clearly see the two distinct shafts that go down to the actual mine. And so the one on the left is most likely the salt handling shaft, and uh, then the one inside this building, which you can't clearly see, is the actual waste handling shaft. Additionally, on these trailers, you can see those are the casks that the uh, radioactive waste is actually transported to this facility in. Um, here you can see a better view of the waste handling shaft in a large building. Now on to Nome. So we turned down Mobley Ranch Road, and uh, eventually we drove for a long ways, and we got to the Nome site. So here you can see the Nome coach site, and uh, the coach drill pad is going to be the one further down. And uh, this is actually looking at the whip facility from the coach drill pad. It's a bit of a high point on the site. So you can clearly see the uh, whip building there. And as we zoom out, you'll be able to see the coach drill pad which I'm standing on. It's a little bit overcast. Uh, beautiful scenery, though. And uh, as we turn around here, you can actually see the coach well site, and so the coach uh, project never actually came to fruition. They did dig the tunnel, but there was no actual detonation. Um, however, you can still see this is where the detonation would have taken place. So this would have been another nuclear device for peaceful purposes, but they decided that Gnome had given them good results, and they felt that they could get results from other tests, um, so they ended up not, not using this. Um, it has since been filled, but um, here you can see it's a monitoring well now. This would have actually gone into what would have been the cavity. Obviously it's not, and as you can see, the radiation levels here are fairly low, actually a little lower than at the gnome site. You can still see, however, um, a little bit more waste here, I guess. Could be a fence post, drill pipe. Yeah, that's actually pretty thick, maybe a drill pipe. Um, but as you can see, it's it's not very radioactive, um, unlike what would have been the case likely at Nome at post shot. Nothing about background. So this is the entrance tunnel to the Nome coach shaft. This is actually pre-shot to Nome. And so in the middle of this green and blue line, that's actually where this entrance shaft was. Now this is where they had only dug the gnome tunnel, uh, pre-gnome shot, and you can see that on this diagram. All right, so right here is the entrance shaft to the gnome and coach tunnels. So they first dug the gnome tunnel, um, which went over here to the left. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's the gnome monument, um, right back over there. So that's the gnome shot. And then they were planning for another shot called Coach. And that tunnel went straight this direction, which I'm pointing now. That, de that shot was never detonated. However, the tunnel was later filled in with many of the gnome debris. So right under this big concrete pad lies all of the radioactive material that they could collect um, from the gnome shot. So here I'll put my detector on the top of this. As you can see, the concrete blocks most of it. This is a very, very thick concrete pad, and the ma majority of the material that they buried under here was not highly radioactive. Uh, so here's a closer look at the concrete cap. So this cap actually holds back, or underneath it's buried, a lot of the radioactive material from the site. Uh, and if we look over on this side, I notice it looks like an animal, uh, hopefully an animal at least, um, dug up a lot of dirt when it was trying to dig under or near the cap um, and you kind of zoom in here it's kind of hard to tell from the video but that's actually a good at least two feet down and that's about as far as I could see and uh, so obviously the cap is more than two or three feet of concrete so that's actually really thick uh, so it's a very very thick cap 
So that was uh, something a little bit unique. Thankfully, none of the dirt or uh, soil that had been disturbed by that creature was radioactive as far as my instruments were concerned. And so now I'm walking around a little ways from the cap. You can see here is a large piece of what may be a drill pipe, judging by the connection there. It's rusted together. It's a decent sized pipe, very interesting rocks, pieces of concrete, all types of artifacts. Here's another pipe, a uh, much smaller scale. No telling what all this was used for. Most of this is actually not radioactive, that's why I don't really have my Geiger counter out right here. Definitely some interesting pieces of metal. You'll never know what you'll find out here. And more pipe. Most of it's buried, so after each storm, you know, whatever you go out here, every time you go out here, it'll be different as far as what you find. See, some of these little pieces are more interesting. Here's a piece of rock. It actually has uh, rust, possibly metal, uh, kind of embedded in it. Here's another one. Obviously, these were from uh, the site when they were working on the test. Here you can clearly see uh, the three pieces of iron in that rock. And uh, now we're kind of going to go look at the same area, but a little bit different here. You can see a really unique piece of rock over here. Uh, big piece. It almost looks like some type of salt-like mineral. Clearly it's been affected by uh, weathering and is partially water-soluble. It's a really neat piece of rock, so if you know what it is, please uh, let me know in the comments. So, but yeah, it's, it's a really interesting site. It's kind of neat being able to see all those different artifacts.